Hi guys, I got a hopefully a quick little video for you today. I uh, I do really appreciate all the people that have been watching this channel and enjoying it and hopefully learning from it. And I've been noticing that a lot of people have been watching a lot of the videos that pertain to newer climbers and kind of beginner stuff and uh, what to buy, how to do certain things. And there's a trick that I wanted to share that's not really a basic climbing idea but it's something that I found incredibly useful when I was beginning to double rope especially in much bigger trees I pretty much very quickly just switched over to single rope but not single rope in the way that most tree climbers think of it I was doing more like basic rope access rope rescue like single rope with two prussics and things like that so that's kind of where my background was for uh, learning how to climb and I've taken that kind of when I picked up double rope more and more. I still incorporated some of those skills I learned doing more standard like uh, rescue stuff because tree climbing, uh, usually we try to utilize rad systems for our work positioning, meaning rapid ascent and descent. So systems that can be used to ascend and descend as well. And the reason most people start with double rope is because double rope's the simplest and cheapest uh, type of rapid ascent descent system because you only need one rope and a friction hitch and if you're using a closed loop blakes so that's all included in the one rope but uh yeah whereas if you're doing single rope on uh a rope without any fancy single rope devices you have to do a transition to switch between ascending and descending so that's not a rad system you're either traveling up or you're traveling down but um Basically, what I want to show you is kind of the way that I would ascend into a tree to set a cambium saver if I was ascending on double rope. Because right now, the way that these are both set up is that both these systems, this uh, split tail Blake and uh, this, a lot of people now are learning on hitch climber systems right out of the get go. And uh, both of these are set up on branches. They're just natural crotched in the branch. But you know, if you ascend, on a natural crotch you're going to be there's going to be more fric friction it's going to be less kind of your rope and it's going to be less kind of the tree so we like to use cambium savers but to set a cambium saver from the ground is pretty difficult and i can't really tell anybody to do it because i don't do it i pretty much never set a cambium saver from the ground if i'm climbing double rope i'll usually use this trick or i'll be alternate lanyarding up the tree so i'm not wearing on any part of the tree too much or my rope so Basically, the idea is, is we're just going to create a canopy anchor that's quickly retrievable so that we can get up to our tie-in and transition over to a cambium saver and then work the rest of the tree on double rope. So basically what that looks like for, let's say, our more sy simple system on a closed loop Blake's is uh, the way that I usually do this is just a running bowline and then some kind of backup. And then usually if it's a long distance that I'm going to be sending the rope up, it's going to be, it also involves some kind of retrieval line in case I have to manipulate it to get it into its position. If I have to pull down a little bit, wiggle it around some branches, I don't want to just lose the other end of the rope and not be able to adjust it if it doesn't go where I want it to go. But if it's nice and close like this, this is really close. The branch is just right here, but then I won't incorporate a retrieval system. So basically the way that I do it just to be quick, is I'll just do a running bowl in and then since I have a carabiner tied on here to double rope I'll just clip my carabiner to the rope so if you're going a short distance you can't see any branches that are going to interfere with you being able to set this canopy anchor uh, then usually I'll just pull it up so now we have a system that we can't retrieve it's just cinched up into the tree uh, but generally if I'm doing this trick it's because I'm going to be ascending a long distance and I want to be able to ascend in more of a single rope style to be a little bit more efficient and also so that I don't have to natural crotch on the tree that I'm climbing so with our hitch climber system here the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to do the same thing I'm just going to put a running bowl in on the rope as my canopy anchor. But now, instead of clipping the carabiner back to the rope as my backup, so we're gonna clip our carabiner through the eye, 
I'm going to grab the tail of the same climbing rope that I'm going to be using. And we can just tie whatever knot you want. This is just for retrieval. It's not for life support. I'm just going to do a overhand and uh, clip it to our carabiner. Now, when I cinch this up to my anchor up in the tree, now this can be retrieved. So if I end up weighting the branch and I decide I don't feel safe climbing on whatever I've set it on, or if there's stuff in the way, it gets caught on a sprout on the way up and I have to pull it down a little bit, kind of flick it over and then pull it back up again, I have a retrieval line that I can pull down. Now, the key about setting this type of canopy anchor is our plan is to get up into the tree, set our cambium saver, and then switch over to double rope, or maybe alternate lanyard to our final position. So that's why, unlike a lot of the anchors you see people doing with rings or with alpine butterflies, things like that, that are more midline, that's harder to retrieve in the tree or to take apart and reset. Our goal is to take this apart immediately in the tree. That's why we're doing a running bowlin on the very end of our rope. And we got our some kind of backup set up because you don't climb on a back on a bowling without a backup so a knot figure eight something like that and then we have our retrieval and our retrieval side just in case over here but we're just going to pull that up to the anchor and to ascend there's several different ways you can send that are pretty economical we don't need the full srt setup to go up the tree uh, a lot of People who are taught to tree climb are very hesitant to do this, but uh, you can put your whole body weight into a friction hitch. You just won't be able to descend on it. So something you use for double rope, like a Blake's, or maybe you got like a distal or a Michoacan on like your hitch climber system, that is able to hold your full weight. Uh, sometimes you might have to dress it a little bit differently, maybe another wrap or something. But you can certainly climb on this and sit back into it and it'll hold you and use that to ascend the tree. You just won't be able to descend because your hitch will start to hockle, it'll lock up, it'll heat up on you. That's why you need things like a rope wrench or to climb double rope so it's only handling half of your weight. But this is totally fine to ascend. Just make sure that you weight it at the ground and make sure that, uh, that your hitch is able to hold your weight. But what I like to use to ascend, you could footlock. I'm not very good at footlocking. Uh, when I first started, I was just using this uh, GME Supply uh, 6 mil accessory cord tied into like Prusik foot loops and stuff. But now I'll more commonly use uh, like a Dyneema sling. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive. And most people that are learning to climb double rope are usually going to pick up a foot ascender as like their first their first like mechanical tool to help you climb so that you don't have to foot lock if you're ascending in free space or to hip thrust or something like that. So any of these will work. Uh, I can show you a couple different ways that we can use these. So let's say that you just have the either the Prusik loop or the Dyneema sling. You can just tie that into a Prusik on this nice Samson True Blue we got here. And now I'll throw on a harness. If I'm just sitting back in my Blake's hitch, we have our Prusik foot loop. And basically we're just gonna inchworm our way up the rope. So I'll stand in the foot loop and press my hitch up the tree. And then you just kinda alternate between those, between sitting in your harness and standing up in the foot loop. So you'll just advance the foot loop a little bit stand up and <laughs> i've already reached my tie-in point so i can't go any higher but <laughs> but if we come over here on our hitch climber system and say you have a foot ascender you could also use foot loop or a prusik loop in this application too but We'll tighten this up, sit into it, make sure the knot's dressed in a way that it's going to be able to hold us. Put on a foot ascender, and it's going to be the same thing. We're just going to be transferring our weight between our foot and between our harness. So you stand up, advance your hitch, sit down, let your foot come up, stand up, advance your hitch, and sit back until we get up to our tie-in point. So 
here we are at a tying point. I'm gonna get my lanyard out, lanyard in. So now that we're at our tie-in and I am safely connected, we're gonna switch over to our canopy anchor so that we can descend and ascend and move around and work the canopy. Obviously I would not be getting a lot of work done starting here in this tree, but it's just for demonstration. So we'll unclip our tail and let that fall. And then it's just as easy as loosening up this running bowline and untying it and take our carabiner out. Adjust and throw on our cambium saver. And now, we are just set up for our standard double rope in a ring and ring friction saver. There it is, it's a pretty simple trick if you don't have any fancy SRT devices and I like it a lot because you can get up into the tree without uh, natural crotching and putting a hurting on your rope or the tree that you're climbing. And uh, you also don't have to set a ring and ring with a throw ball from the ground. So it works out really nicely. And uh, this has just, I've always been frustrated when I've tried to do a long ascent on double rope. So this is so much nicer to just be able to get up into the tree on single rope and then transition to your working system. Because I don't have a problem with double rope once I'm in the tree. But when you're just accessing it at the beginning, it can be a really big headache. And so this is just a speedy little tool that you can use when you're uh, before you're transitioning over to single rope and things like that. <laughs> Got an update, little update for you. If you remember this rope from uh, last year, Samson sent me some uh, of the Samson Dry family. They sent me the Vortex, and then I picked up this is some Voyager that I've had for about a year now and it's my 80 foot rope i use it for absolutely everything all my removals and smaller climbing and stuff like that and there's been a hurt and put on this rope this thing's nice and fuzzed up and what you know you want to know is does that coating wear off because the samson dry coating is just an after treatment coating that goes on the rope after it's been braided and everything and so it's possible for it to wear off and i did a little torture test of it again recently after kind of a year of using it and I've really loved this rope that that uh, dry treatment made it really slippery which was actually kind of nice because it held the rope together well so that it broke in super super nicely without uh, getting any big burrs or anything like that and uh, yeah that dry coating was amazing but what I did notice is after all the wear that I put on it it has uh, pretty much lost that coating. So the, I'll uh, put some stats on the screen, but I took this for a climb that I'll show you at the end of this video and uh, soaked it in a bag of water uh, a couple hours before I went for that climb. So it was soaking for quite a while and it did absorb about like two pounds of water or something like that, maybe just under that. But uh, it uh, it's not like it was <laughs> when I bought it. So. The coating can wear off, but this rope's really well used. I assume if you were babying it and not um, doing like natural crotching a lot for removals or things like that, you know, the thing I'm showing you how to avoid right here, then maybe that coating would have lasted a little bit longer. But this is a pretty well used rope and I'll probably get another year out of it before it should probably be retired. But that, um, that Samson dry coating when it was brand new was incredible and worked really, really well. And I would, if I had to buy another 24 strand rope for climbing, I just to have that dry coating in the beginning was huge. So, and because of their price, these are very economical, even with the upgraded uh, Samson dry version. Uh, I can't think of another rope that I would buy instead of uh, Voyager. I really like this Voyager. This is like the 11.7 uh, dry treated one. And yeah, this 
the Samson dry coating, like Voyager versus like uh, the dry treated one is such a huge upgrade. And the dry treated one just isn't that really much it more expensive. It's comparable to just other regular 24 strand ropes. And I've, uh, I've really, really like this rope. I'm a huge fan of this rope, but the dry, tr the dry coating, you know, it's just a rope coating, so it will wear off. It's not going to last forever. And you'll see <laughs> in the video, this little oak I climbed with a great view. Uh, uh, it does start to freeze up on me because that coating's gone and the water soaked in and, uh, <laughs> the, the rope, because it's very rigid when it's full of water and just completely frozen. But I really appreciate Samson sending me these ropes. Uh, unfortunately that dry coating isn't a forever thing, but who knows, maybe I'll come out with a rope wash that you can use that'll help enhance that, uh, treatment as its life goes on and maybe even dry treat non dry treated ropes. But Nick Wax has something like that. I don't know how well it works, but yeah, really like this rope. Really appreciate Samson for sending me some of those ropes and, uh, shout out to Arb Session too. I got the bags over here that I've been using for work every day and uh, I'll have a update on those bags soon. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy this little video of a climb that I did uh, with this uh, canopy anchor technique without a uh, rope wrench or anything. Part of the tree. <laughs> oh yeah, this rope is freezing solid. <laughs> <laughs> out of. I'm like in the top of this tree. Look at that. Downtown St. Paul over there. Got the Capitol and the Cathedral over there. Schmidt Brewery. Oh, what a beautiful view. Oh yeah. What a nice tree to climb on a freezing rope. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I'll uh, see you guys in the next video.